Hello, my name is Nils Juncker and I'm going to talk about ENI. First, first of all, what is ENI? ENI is a multinational oil and gas company from Italy. It was founded in 1953 and, it's, and their headquarters are currently located in Rome. ENI works in different industries like contracting, nuclear power, refining and extraction, energy, mining, chemical and plastics, and even in the hospitality, textile, and news industry. ENI was ranked among the top eight companies in the world according to market capital capitalization in the oil and gas industry a few years ago, and were also in the top 100 companies in the Fortune Global 500 list. They cur the cur their current position has decreased and so has the market share in the oil and gas industry. So what went wrong? What happened to ENI? Uh, ENI's oper operations are very large and scattered. This, this has caused some organizational issues, which, as you can see in the table right now, um, ENI isn't even currently in the top 10 companies based on market capitalization in the oil and gas industry. And they also had a scandal a few years ago while, because they were named on the top 100 companies killing the planet a few years ago. They also have bigger competitors which limit their their potential to grow as, as a company. And also they had uh, the all these factors led to a decrease in reven in revenues and market position. As you can see on the table on in 2015 they had a decrease in revenues of around 40 billion euros and they had to fire around uh, 50,000 employees. First of, first of all, I did an in, the internal analysis and uh, I analyzed their value change. ENI's main core of operations is to explore for uh, oil and gas fields in the upstream sector. This could be offshore or onshore as you can see in, in the graph. Um, after finding and extracting the oil, they develop, they develop this oil. After developing, they ship it um, to ref refineries and ke petrochemical plants, the international markets, trans transmission networks, um, even to, to distribute to gas and power to B2B businesses or B2C businesses. Also, they are nowadays a very environmental friendly company. So they also produce biofuel or lubricants or lubricants which are completely environmental friendly. Also, as for strengths and weaknesses that we that I found out, um, ENI is very good at uh, go-to-market strategies. This means being able to enter new markets and to adapt to them. Their products are also recognized on a worldwide level of being of high quality and so are their services. They also have an efficient distribution network. They in, after all, they work in 67 countries. They have now they have a good reputation because of the green and environmental friendly project, projects that they are doing right now. Currently, they want to um, eliminate completely their all their upstream em carbon emissions by 2030. They also have constant cash flows, which means that they could invest in new projects to expand themselves. And also, they have ca high skill employees. They even have associations with uh, universities to train their employees to, to be and do the best that they can for the company. As for weaknesses, as mentioned before, they, their operation, operations are large and scattered in 67 countries, which has caused some organiza organizational issues and the company has lost focus of their primary, primary objectives in the oil and gas industry. They also ha had to take a lot of time and resources to repair the brand image because of the scandal mentioned a few years ago about killing the planet. So they had to invest a lot in environmental projects. And also they need to keep up with compar competitors, which means spending more money because uh, to compete against companies like Exxon, which are four or five, five times bigger means to they need to keep spending money to promote themselves or to buy the latest equipments to be able to to compete against them as for the external analysis we i, I analyze some trends like legal and social cultural trends like the environment 
it's not only a legal trend that the oil and gas companies have to follow certain um, car carbon emissions which can go uh, higher than certain levels but it's also a social cultural trend right now every day every day the the environment is more important for our generation so it's very common right now to these projects about the environment ENI has also to take into account the demographic trends like the alternate distribution of population and cultures also the social cultural trends which means different cultures in different markets they have to understand and adapt to new cultures in to being able to enter these markets efficiently and to being able to work with the local people also the political and legal trends which means paying taxes declaring their income statements and balance sheet the technological trends which mean which means in in whether investing in r d in the r d department or obtaining the new machinery to gain a competitive advantage this new equipment is what gives oil and gas companies their advantage of, over the competitors to make the oil and gas extra extraction process more efficiently and quickly and also the economic trends like they have to be prepared and being able to adapt to possible recessions and unemployment like what happened in 2015 also for as opportunity and threats they can they can still expand to new markets where their competitors aren't very strong there for exxon like uh, i analyzed the their operations map which we'll discuss later on they also have new investment opportunities for expansion and also for the r d department to get new machinery they also could take advantage of these new green projects that they are doing and uh, rebrand the and remake the brand as an environmental friendly image and reputation. They also could, could form new partnerships while doing these green projects with a uh, green uh, with environmental uh, companies and associations. Also develop uh, new products for that are environmental friendly or and also improve their online service, which could which would facilitate their online sales as for threats like mentioned before the competitors like exxon which are bigger and bigger every day and it's very hard to keep up with them also the increase of raw materials and, pro and production costs which could limit the growing opportunities and also they have to adapt to every new environmental policies and regulations uh, that are implemented every year because of every year the contamination on the planet is even stronger and also the growing limitations that the company has do because the oil and gas company is a very competitive market and it's very hard to obtain new contracts when there are currently several gas companies already working in, in those sectors so what to do after analyzing all the possible solutions um, eni wants to currently expand to the middle east norway and mexico but should that be the best option or should ENI go to another country? Should ENI also change their business model completely or should ENI do more environmental projects and rebrand themselves as a 100% envir environmental friendly company? Another option would be, and this would be, this would be the more risky option, to attack the U.S. from the front to regain market share from Exxon, and so expanding to the U.S. and attacking Exxon from the front, which of course takes a lot, it's a lot of of risk. So for my solution, I suggest to restructure the business model which means eliminating all non-crucial activities like in different sectors like in the textile and news industry which shouldn't be so relevant for ENI and they could save a lot of resources and time. Also uh, focus all the attentions and resources on expanding which should be their pr priority right now. For me they should first expand to the Middle East where Exxon has a um, isn't very strong there in the market with and the other competitors are near that strong and they only do mostly upstream operations in the uh, they do operations in the upstream sector so uh, ENI could take advantage of this and work in the midstream and and downstream um, sectors 
After this, uh, they could expand to Africa where again they only work in the upstream sector and currently there have been billion, billions of dollars in investments in the midstream sector so ENI could focus on the midstream sector in Africa and grow as a company. And after a few years, while <clears throat> also taking advantage of the new environmental trends and giving the company a new environmental friendly image, they could expand to the USA and attack Exxon from, from the rear. By growing after all these years, they should be able to expand to the US with a very large operation. And also because of their image, it should be easier for them to get contract because companies and especially state con uh, state uh, the state will likely be as associated with a company which works environmental which is environmental friendly rather than a company that doesn't care or doesn't do much for the environment like Exxon which has had a lot of scandals over the years. So this will be the long term will. A strategy would be to go to the U.S. If this will, if this was always the primary objective, but it should be, it is the final step. So thank you.